Okay. It's 1.30, so I'll start to talk. Um, so the title of my talk, as I um, sent it to the conference, was why 10% of women in the conference program does not mean gender quotas. Since that, I have talked about the topic in various people, and I've realized that um, even though I did not think of this, I just thought about kind of gender as one example of one category, and IT as just like one area that we can talk about. I realized that for some people, kind of things I'm talking about and examples I'm talking about, they just elicit this very emotional reaction, which I did not personally expect, but I realized that everything I wanted to say can be said about any kind of category, any kind of area. So I've decided that for most, for the largest part of this talk, I'll just abstract away from the particular category and particular area. So the talk you're about to hear probably called more something like why you care about X percent of category Y. So, um, sometimes you probably hear that certain area is um, discussed as there is a X percent of category Y in that particular area. And sometimes there are even goals, like people are setting goals, like we would like for this particular area to have X percent of category Y in two years, for example. And sometimes this kind of sounds like, why should I care about X percent of category Y? Like why is that even important? Why would I do that? Um, and what I would like to, sh uh, to show you is that you actually care about X percent of category Y. And the reason is um, low percent of category Y can be an indication of something that causes um, lower quality of the group than is achievable. So the average level of the group is lower than optimal. It might be. And I'll show you why. I will also talk about potential solutions of the problem. And the uh, solutions will be outreach and anonymity and they will increase the average level of participants. I will show you why in lots of details. Before we go into all that, just wanted to talk shortly about myself. I'm a senior data scientist at Blue Cross Blue Shield of North Carolina. So as a data scientist, I <coughs> wanted to approach this problem from the point of logic and numbers. And not go into that emotionally complicated part. So, <coughs> this is what I'm planning to talk to you today. So, first, we will go into very abstract land of green and blue rectangles. So, we'll abstract away very, very far from any categories that we usually talk about. After that, we will dive even in even more fascinating area of symphony orchestras, and we'll explore how they solved um, the issues that they have in their hiring process. Then we will return back to our world and discuss shortly like what those solutions that we've um, that I've proposed, how are they applicable? to the world we're currently in. Okay, so, as I told you, we are abstracting away from categories. We are living in very abstract land. So, very abstract land, this is what we have. This is the whole world of what we have. In this world, there are rectangles. There are 10 of them. That's the whole, whole world of rectangles. Rectangles, are participating in a game, very fascinating game. Uh, 
we are choosing six rectangles out of those 10 rectangles. Um, so we are, the rectangles have two qualities. They have color, you can see there are green rectangles and blue rectangles, and they have height. And since height is not as visible as color, I've put their height down below. So their height is five, three, four, two, four, five, three, four, two, four. So green rectangles and blue rectangles are exactly the same. They have exactly the same two samples of rectangles. And in our game, they're, we're choosing six of them. We are trying to maximize the height of rectangles in the group that we chose. So we are interested in getting as highest average height as possible. Also, we also have a kind of level threshold. We would like our um, rectangles to be higher than three. That's kind of the level that we are accepting them into those six candidates that we're choosing. So those are the rules of the game. Now let's explore some scenarios using this very limited situation. Okay, um, scenario number one. Every rectangle is participating. We are choosing the best rectangles possible. We are cutting the ones which are below three. We have perfect candidates with heights four, 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 five, four, four. Our sum at this point is 26. It's for me and probably for some other people, it's easier to track the sum, that's why I put it here. Um, but we will be interested in average. Average height at this point is 4.3. So just remember that number, that is the optimal point for our game. So for our 10 rectangles, 4.3 is the highest average height we can get. Now, what happens if we have some problems in this story? Problem number one, some rectangles on the right did not hear about the game. They did not hear that they can come and participate in this very interesting competition. They just don't know, they didn't come up, didn't show up, they did not get measured, they are just not here. We don't, wha what's in that red uh, part over there, it's not visible, they did not come. In that particular case, we are choosing from the seven that appeared, we're still able to choose that five. We will have to choose that three because those two fours did not show up. So at this point, our sum height is 24. Our average height is four, it did go down. So if we were not possible, it was not possible to reach someone, average height can go down. We will call this outreach problem. So we did not get to some good candidates. Average went down. Okay, another interesting scenario. In this particular scenario, when our rectangle comes and it's measured against our level, then that rectangle is green, nothing interesting happens. Then that rectangle is blue, it comes and there is an elevator and that elevator goes down. <laughs> and it goes down two points. So when we're measuring blue rectangle, Instead of seeing it uh, actual height, we kind of see heights which are below there, minus two to their actual heights. So now we're seeing them as three, one, two, zero, two. Okay? If we're measuring them with a steel, same level, uh, we will take that rectangle, which is actually five, but we see it as three, we will take uh, five, three, four, four from green subset. Now, we are at an issue because that question mark there is marking that we need to either compromise our level threshold. So we are taking someone who is below threshold and among the remaining candidates, everyone we see seems to be at two. So we have two, 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 and zero. So everyone we see is below, and um, if we want six candidates, remember by the rules of our game we wanted six candidates, now we have to compromise on one of those. Either we are picking not six candidates, but five, not picking that one, or we're picking 
that one, and we are getting uh, below the threshold that we set. Okay, let's say that we've chosen the second variant. We're interested in six candidates more. Our average height at this point is 3.7. Went down way below. Uh, we will call this bias problem. So that will be our bias problem. Some heights seem less than they are. Okay? Um, so, um, someone might look at the pools of candidates, candidate rectangles that we've pulled in those two cases and look at them like, look, in the scenario where we had outreach problem, we ended up with four green, two blue. In the scenario where we had bias problem, we ended up with five green, one blue. <coughs> and we kind of remember that in our world, there are five green, five blue. We also remember that when we had like that consider everyone scenario, we ended up with three green, three blue. So this is looks like disbalance. Hmm. Someone might say, can we fix that disbalance? Can we like try to kind of make it more balanced? And this is the place there people will frequently come with a solution called quota. A quota will be, we will say, in our six candidates, we need two blue rectangles, or we need three blue rectangles. And that's how it will always be. We just will choose it that way. And there is a certain attractiveness of that idea. What is attractive about it? What is attractive is it is very easy to measure. I can just look at your rectangles and say, I have two blue rectangles, six green rectangles. I've counted, this is how many you have. I can put goals for someone who's choosing rectangles. You have to choose two blue rectangles. And after they have that goal, I can easily come back to them and check, did they follow their goal? Did they achieve it? This is very, very easy. That's why uh, certain people are attracted to it. Let's see what happens if we have our issues. Remember, we're discussing two outreach issue and bias issue. And what happens if we apply quotas in those scenarios? Scenario number one, we had outreach problem. Uh, we were not able to reach those three blue rectangles on the right. We said, now a quota is we need two blue bars. Uh, actually, in this particular scenario, this is still um, uh, the best scenario which we have in the outreach problem. So we did not change anything here. Average height is still four, still lower than optimal. What happens? if our quota changes. And now we say we need three blue bars. And those two, four green bars, again, did not hear about it. Now we have blue bars with heights three, two, and five show up. And our quota tells us we need three blue bars. So we are happily getting bars five and three we're looking at bar two, and that's again the compromising solution. So we're either compromising quota of three blue bars. We can say, no, we cannot get three blue bars here. Or we're uh, compromising our level needed. So we are saying we can get someone who's below our level threshold. If we do that, average height goes down to 3.8. Okay doesn't look like we're getting anything from quotas in this particular scenario. What happens if we take bias? And now we have a quota, we need two blue bars. Hmm. Now we are sort of considering blue bars separately. Out of those blue bars, we are picking those which look like three and four. We know that their true heights are five and four. We picked those, we've picked the best four out of remaining 
green rectangles. Look, that is actually better than our result in just bias scenario. In simple bias scenario, we were not considering this one, we were considering this one. So our average height went a little bit up from simple bias scenario. So someone might be thinking, oh, we actually got something from that quota. Maybe it's kind of actually getting the whole, the level, average level slightly better. Let's look at what happens if we move the quota up. Now our quota is we need three blue, three blue bars. We are looking at blue bars separately, picking up what looks like three to two. Their actual height is five four four. We're picking the best out of green bars. We are ending up with our optimal scenario with some height 26, average height 4.3, and just uh, remember this is the exactly the optimal scenario we had on the first slide when which we called consider everyone. Okay, so quarter through blue, blue bars actually did get us the optimal solution. Interesting. What happens if we make it even more? Now we are considering four blue bars and now we took a green bar with a height four out of consideration that lowered our average. Uh, so now we're back to 4.2, we're lower than the optimal solution 4.3. Not going through all potential solutions but showing you that as a graph, I can easily do that because we only have five, so quarters can be one through five. Number three gives us the maximum. Um, if we go away from the maximum, we are lowering our average height. What's going on? What's so special about number three? What's so special about number three? As we remember from that first slide wh when was everyone considered, that is exactly the point where if we considered everyone with their true height, that's the distribution we got. So distribution point three is that ideal point of balance which reflects the point of balance in the scenario where we considered everyone with their true height. However, uh, we had five, that was kind of easy to go through. Usually we deal with scenarios where we have lots and lots more of candidates. And we only had two parameters here. We usually have, if we were still in the world of abstract ideas, in addition to rectangles, we would have circles and triangles. In addition to being green and blue, they would have other colors. They will be also striped and dotted. So there will be a million of different parameters. And optimizing all that to get to that perfect ideal balance point would be a very complex optimization problem. Yeah, that was the point. So, uh, we talked about the fact that it was kind of, let's not go back, um, that that ideal point, we reached it when we matched everyone's participating uh, process. So is there any other way that we can emulate that same everyone has similar access process? What do we need to solve? First, we need to solve outreach. We want everyone to be considered. If I want to reach out to those rectangulars four and four, we need to tell them, come participate. Now they're here, we are considering them, average level goes high. Now, if we make color not visible in our measurements, so when the rectangle comes up, we don't know what color it is, it's hidden. Now the elevator doesn't know that it needs to go up or down, elevator is not doing anything, we are measuring everyone, and we are getting our ideal solution. 
we don't need to know the point, the ideal point of equilibrium. We are reaching it without knowing that very, how to solve that very complex optimization problem. Okay, so looks like if we consider outreach and we have a way to anonymize our potential candidates, we can reach our optimal average height 4.3. Okay, it looks good so far. Let's travel through fascinating world of symphony orchestras. And symphony orchestras um, are described in this very famous paper from American Economic Review. And it's regarding uh, blind additions and its effect on female musicians. Before we go into that, I just wanted to say two words about why symphony orchestra are particularly fascinating for studying this. So number one, symphony orchestra has very uh, precise uh, size. So usually symphony orchestra is about 100 people. It does not change much. You do not hire more violinists. And um, second point that is interesting is that the roles are also pretty closely set. You cannot hire, say, more harp players, which are more frequently female than male. You have kind of set amount of instruments. You need to hire people who play those instruments. Okay, so what's happening in the fascinating world of symphony orchestras? Uh, there was a large change that happened in 1970s, 1980s. So before talking about that change, let's look at how did it look before the change. So before that, we are looking at four largest symphony orchestra in the United States. That's uh, New York Philharmonic Orchestra, Boston, Cleveland, and Chicago symphony orchestras. In all of them, before 1970, we have le five or less percent of musicians. They also have very interesting addition uh, strategy. So even though each person who is participating in addition does have to come play, and there's a person who is listening to them, um, most contenders for new positions are student of select group of teachers. So that's how they know that the position is opening. Uh, that's who comes to those additions. That's who is frequently chosen as a result. Okay. Um, interesting scenario. Now, 1970s, 1980s, there is a new push for democratizing the process. How do we do that? Number one, they started advertise openings for the new positions in the union papers. What does that achieve? That achieves outreach. So more people were able to hear about the positions. That had huge effect. So before they had about 20 uh, applicants for one position. Now they had about 100, so five times up just due to increase of outreach. Number two, they've introduced very interesting change. It is called screen audition and sometimes called blind auditions. This is how it looks like. The person who is auditioning for the new position is sitting behind a screen that goes from uh, top of the stage. Um, there is very interesting detail which I'm fascinated about. There is a special carpet that uh, is leading to that point because by listening to how a person walks, probably when specifically you're a musician, you can guess the gender of the player. So that is also hidden. So the person who's coming is coming behind the stage. They um, the jury that is sitting only knows the number of that particular person. The, there is a special manager who knows how the numbers correspond to actual people. The musician comes, they play behind the screen 
they disappear, the jury says, yes, we're hiring that person, not we're not hiring that person. So there is anonymity, we are only judging the quality of music at this point. Uh, let's see what happened. So here is the plot. You see the four orchestras I've mentioned, New York Philharmonic Orchestra, Boston, uh, Chicago and Cleveland Philharmonic Orchestras. This is female, sh female share of new hires uh, for certain years. This is five year average for each year. Just giving you details about the graph. And see how the percent of women changed. So they went from 5% to more than half in some cases. I think it was 45% average that it went to. So what do you like about this case? Um, what I like about this case is that those symphony orchestra musicians did exactly what I'm trying to offer you here today. They increased the outreach, they worked on uh, the fact that everyone should be able to know about the positions opened. Second, they hid the color. They hid uh, who is the person playing and they made the jury concentrate on the quality of music only. That allowed them to choose uh, the candidates who played best. Okay. How does this play in kind of our world of IT? Um, so we're discussing two problems. Problem number one is outreach. In outreach, um, we are talking about employment. It looks like employment is doing pretty good in terms of outreach because everyone knows where positions are published, publish positions are published, so everyone can see them, everyone can apply. So outreach is in a pretty good condition in terms of employment. How about conferences? Hmm, can it happen that a certain conference is kind of only known within a certain group of people and there is a completely different group of people which never heard about that conference? And if an organizer of this conference reaches out to that other group and tells them that here there is this fantastic conference going around, um, come join us, there is a possibility that would reach the average level of the talks. Can it may. May not, may can. How about anonymity? Here conferences are doing amazing. They've created anonymous reviews. So that's where um, only the text of your what you're submitting is judged. They look at the text only. They don't look at the name. They don't look at the color, gender, stripes, or whatever you have. Um, how about employment? Hmm. Currently, when you're trying to hire someone, you usually meet that person. So you know pretty well who they are. Imagine this very interesting world where hiring would be kind of like screen additions for symphony orchestras. So you can talk to the person, you can see kind of the kind of code they write, you can ask them different kinds of questions, but until you actually hire them, you don't know who they are. Nothing in kind of um, what we can do in terms of technology prevents us from doing something like this. It is possible. We have not invested into doing it, but there is a possibility that if we do, we will see the raise in average quality. Um, so, um, someone again must, might ask, like, but what you're talking, like, I understand that outreach can get to the higher average, um, anonymity can get, uh, can 
get to higher average, but this all um, involves me actually doing something. I need to do additional things. Like I this is complicated, I already have something, it works. But I think like everyone who is doing anything in any field is interested in the quality of the potential candidates that they are working with. And if those additional movements can increase quality, I think they're worth it. So, to conclude, I wanted to convince you that you actually care about X percent of category Y. And you care about it because it might signal that you have one of those two problems, that you're dealing with outreach problem or bias problem. Uh, we looked at how adding quotas changes things. And we've noticed that uh, if we're not getting the quota at exactly right ideal point, we are not getting the optimal solution. We're either for it or we are after it, not the optimal point. However, we've noticed that if we increase the input funnel, if we're doing the outreach, we are increasing average quality. Um, if we create anonymous process, we increase average quality. So I believe every conference organizer, employer, or educator is interested in raising the level of the potential candidates. Therefore, they are interested in increasing the outreach and creating an anonymous process. Thank you. And you're the first person to ask a question. Yes. So I did think about this. <laughs> so uh, before we go into that, that is a good point, and I'll come to that. That I want to answer the what happens if uh, anonymity will kind of allow the person, not the person who is interviewing to be uh, answering questions. So we have lots of solutions, for example, for different kinds of exams, like the proctored exams, then you go to a certain room, there is a camera, and you work with a very certain computer, and people, someone's checking, I don't know, your driver's license before you go there. We can probably extend something like that to interviews. And you can go to your interview to interview location, now how simli simply how you go to exam location, but you will not be visible to the person who is on the other side. It is solvable. I don't tell you, I don't want to tell you that there is a solution right now. I'm just telling you that there is nothing that prevents this from actually being solved. Coming back to the um, uh, numbers. So, are you talking about the musicians in?
yeah, so the, yeah, exactly. Solvi solving the problem is that uh, knowing uh, knowing that person's face and checking that that person is that person can be separated completely from the interview process, and then we are there. So there are situations with extreme outreach problems, yes. Um, we have to kind of do some research to find out if we are in a situation where our world only, like for this, for this particular game, our world only has green rectangles, that's situation one, or we, for some reason, are not reaching to our blue rectangles, and yes, we need to do kind of research, find out if they exist, and if they exist to kind of try to get to them. It is additional work. I told you that the kind of, yes, all both those solutions require additional work. Yes. So, um, this is, again, interesting problem, and work optimization problems can be complex. We can optimize for more than one thing. Like, this was a scenario where we optimized for one thing only, which was average quality. In some scenarios, I believe from sci science fiction literature, the flights far, far away from Earth are particularly important when you consider personal um, quirks of the team. Like when people have to be with each other for a very long time and don't have anyone else, that becomes extremely important. Probably when you pick up teams for flight from Earth, that is more important than average quality. You can optimize for two things. Um, you can kind of put compatibility into your equation. We can look how that plays out. You will probably lose in average quality if you optimize for compatibility.
there was a question over there first, but then we'll come back to you. Uh, do you still have a question? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so again, I've uh, tried to make this problem as simple as possible because that is easier to work with and it's easy to illustrate with. The real world, yes, is way more complex. We are dealing with multiple uh, kind of scales that we're working with. Um, setting a level of those scales is definitely helpful. I think it is also kind of for different roles your focus might be on kind of different scales number one and number two uh, if you are picking up a team you would probably also interested in picking people of like which have different heights so your all your heights are covered in a team so this is kind of more complex solution where you would be covering like this team as a whole needs to have at least one person of level five in this, at least one person of level five in this, and that's how you're picking. Anything else? Okay, thank you so much for the discussion.